Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about using conditionals in less. More specifically, we're gonna talk about something called mix-in guards. And mix-in guards basically allow you to use certain mix-in code when a certain condition is met and use other mix-in code when other conditions are met. So the easiest way to kind of wrap your head around this is just for me to show you an example. So over here, I have a mix-in setup and it's called P style. And basically what this does is it takes a size parameter and it uses that size to set the font size and then it colors the text red. So for all of the paragraphs on my website, I'm using this mix-in. And you can see right now I'm passing it 20 pixels. So the font size is gonna be 20 pixels. And you can see over here on the website, it's doing that. So we have these 20 pixel uh, font size paragraphs and then they're colored red. But imagine a scenario where on my website, I wanted text that was over 20 pixels to be colored blue, and I wanted text that was under 20 pixels to be colored red. Now, I don't know why I would want that, but let's say that that's something that I wanted, right? So whenever the font size of a particular element on the website was uh, over 20 pixels, it would be blue, and then when it was under or equal to, it would be red. Right now, the text is all just red, but what I could do is I could use these mix-in guards in order to specify a condition. So I can say dot p style size when, and here I can define a condition. So I can say at size, and I can say less than or equal to 20. And so basically, this is only gonna get executed. In other words, this these attributes are only gonna get inserted into here when the font size is less than or equal to 20. So you can see that everything still works because we passed in a font size of 20. But if I pass in a font size of 21, now all of a sudden, all of the styling goes away, right? And so I defined this mix-in guard up here and that prevented any of this, any of these attributes from getting added into here because the condition wasn't met. So what I could do is I can add in another condition and I can just copy this and I'm gonna paste it right below. And now we'll make this if it's greater than 20. So if it's greater than 20, we're still gonna use the size, but now we'll change the color to blue. So what should happen now is this should be 21 size font and it should be blue and that's exactly what happens. So now if I make this like 19, it'll turn back to red and if I make this like 30, then it'll turn back to blue. So it's basically conditionally styling these things. So I'm calling this same mixin, I'm calling it dot p style, but depending on the value that I pass in, a different mixin is getting used. So you can use these mixin guards in order to basically create like little if statements on your less file. Now, over here in my web browser, I have opened the official less documentation. And I'm down here in this section called mixin guards. And this is actually, you know, exactly what I just taught you how to do. It sort of discusses doing stuff like that. But if you go down, you can look at a list of uh, comparison operators and then also logical operators and type checking functions. Now there's a lot here and there's a lot of ways that you can compare different types of values. So you can use these like little functions and you can use all sorts of, um, you know, different attributes here. So like this is checking like the type of uh, website. So is it mobile or desktop? So you wanna take a look at this page on the docs and really familiarize yourself with all of your options. But for the most part, what we did in this video, you know, using these mixing guards is exactly how you're gonna use these. Um, really where you can make these more powerful is just by changing these conditions. So the more powerful the conditions, obviously the more powerful that these are gonna be in your template. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.